Okay, uh, guys, I wanted to make a video about something that's pretty, uh, seems to be pretty elusive, which is uh, ceilings in 2020 design. <laughs> for some reason, um, for one, no one really seems to talk about them too much. Uh, at least I haven't really seen anything out there. And two, uh, it, they're really touchy in 2020. So, I mean, you can, you can screw up a ceiling pretty easily just by putting in uh, another wall somewhere, and then all of a sudden all your ceilings are screwed up. But... I particularly wanted to um, make this video for uh, one, cathedral ceilings, to show you how to do cathedral ceilings, uh, and two, um, when you have multiple heights of ceilings in the same uh, area, uh, a lot of times, or even in the same drawing at all, uh, those different height ceilings can really screw with you and make it so that the ceilings look totally screwed up. So I wanted to kind of do this video to help you guys out. Once you uh, see what I do here, for the cathedral ceiling and also for when you have the different heights. And then also I have another one, actually another thing that I want to show you as well, uh, which is a little bit different. It's just when there's kind of like a random, uh, like say soffit or something throughout the room that you can also do to, uh, to make it so it doesn't screw with your ceilings. Um, but hopefully you guys uh, find this video helpful. The first thing I want to do uh, is I'm going to show you how to do a cathedral ceiling. Um, this is obviously in a perfect world where everything is exactly where it's supposed to be in the center of everything. Um, so just keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start out. Sorry about that. I'm going to start out by making a uh, making my room here. I'm going to start out by doing this as a 50. What you want to do is you want to do two wherever your cathedral is, wherever your wherever your wherever, you're, wherever you have a peak, you want to do two separate sections of the wall. Okay. So first of all, you're going to do 50, 50 here, um, 50 here, uh, 200 here, 50 here, 50 here, 200 here. All right, so obviously right here is the peak of our cathedral ceiling. And so what I'm going to do first is you're going to click on, double click on the wall, and you're going to pull this off to the side. So you want to see this green area right here. And the reason you want to see that is because First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make it um, the height here. You're going to click on use same height for both ends. You're going to uncheck that. And then when you click on this, it's going to show you which end you're, you're messing with here. So you can see here that this is now on this end. Since that's the peak, what we're going to do is we're going to change that. Let's say that the peak is actually at 10 feet. So we're going to put that at uh, 120 inches. And then uh, let's see here. Let's do this other wall here. This wall, same thing. Uncheck that. This time it's going to be right here. So this is going to be 120 inches there. And we're going to open up the other side. Uncheck this. And this side's going to be at 120 inches. Apply. And this side's going to be the same thing. Uh, 120 inches. So hopefully, as long as everything went well, when we come in here, First thing you'll see is that the ceiling, cathedral ceilings. So again, this isn't a perfect scenario. This is assuming that the cathedral ceiling goes all the way down. There are other things that you, I will show you here if it's not a perfect scenario like this, where it doesn't go all the way down. Um, but that's how you do a cathedral ceiling. Now, in some situations, you'll run into, um, if you're doing the whole area, You'll see that there's actually, like for instance, let's say there's a, okay, so we've got the bottom of this is at, is at 8 feet or 96 inches. And sometimes, let's say it's in a bathroom and you have like a little linen closet that's also part of the walls that you want to build up, you know, make that part of your drawing. Um, and let's say that's at 84 inches. If you put in, let's say uh, 25 by 25, and then double click here, wall group. And let's say, let's make it seven feet high. When you do that, if you pull that in here, what you're going to see is that the ceiling actually drops down to meet that height of that ceiling, right? So <clears throat> the program automatically wants to make it so that everything meets, all the ceilings meet. That's what it automatically wants to do. But as you can see here, obviously, uh, that's, that's screwing it up, right? It does not, that's not what you want. So what you're going to do in this particular situation is, uh, we'll close out duplicates first of all. 
um, you're going to go in here, and what you're going to find is is that it automatically changes. Even though we went back and made it so that the whole wall was 84 inches high, it changed it automatically to have two different heights. So what you're going to want to do is change that back first. So you're going to apply there for that wall right there, and then you're going to apply it for the other wall as well. Just for safety measures, I want to lock that in there. There you go. Second thing you're going to want to do, this is very important, go to type, where it says ceiling right here. You're going to go to this wall and this wall and go to do not connect to ceiling. For both of those you want to do uh, do not connect to ceiling. So now when we open this back up, everything's been reset and you're good there. So you would maybe have like a door here or whatnot. So that would, uh, the whole do not connect to ceiling is going to help you out a lot if you have different height, uh, different heights for how, how high the ceiling is. Um, it's going to make, it's going to make things a lot uh, easier for you <laughs> in your drawing career. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out is, you know, you see it, at least where I'm at, I see it all the time. Uh, in a situation like this where maybe there's a door here, but then like, a, 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 let's say there is this closet here and there's a door here, and then there's a ceiling that goes across here. And that can be really frustrating if you don't know what you're doing. So let's say it's a 12 inch deep ceiling. Um, it's I guess we'd call that a soffit. Um, and so what you would do in this situation as far as what? I like to do personally. This is the easiest thing that I've found. Um, you go to rectangle. You're gonna click there and make that rectangle wherever it is. So let's say it's perfectly with that. Uh, let's say it's perfectly with that um, closet there. What you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on it, and you're gonna make 3D. Make it 3D. Now it's actually a 3D shape. Okay. What I probably should have done before I did that was. Do a elevation view. Um, so there's an elevation view there, and put that back in place. And then remember, uh, I, I know some of you guys maybe didn't see some of my videos before, but in a, in a previous video, I talked about textures. You can literally make textures. Uh, you can put textures on anything. So you can do you can do anything you want. I mean, you could technically you could use anything you want to do this. I think the best option is to do a 3D item like how I just did, but you could even go into like decorations and go to like, you know, uh, uh, what's that called, uh, uh, area rug and make it a certain thickness and make it a certain width and all that, but it, it seems easiest to do it with rectangles, but you can do surfaces on anything and make them whatever you want. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to this, this is actually the surface that we just made, but we know it's not this thick and it's not on the floor. So you're going to make that right height, so let's say it's 12 inches high. And then you want to obviously have it match the rest of your, your well, in this situation for a soffit, you would make it match the walls. So you're going to go to the paint, whatever yours is, your generic, or whatever you change it to. Mine is set to almond 2. I'll change that. And then you're going to bring it up to, to match. And in this situation, what you would do is bring it up so that this is at 12. Yeah. So it's 12 inches away from the height of that ceiling. And when you pull this open, you'll see that it actually matches everything. It looks like it's part of it. So that would be, you know, if there's a doorway here, sometimes there's a, there's that, you know, soft that you got there. Now, if I was in this particular house, and let's say this whole, let's say from, let's say like I don't know, two feet out here, let's say this, let's say this, let's say this is right here. It's and it's this closet is always here, right? Um, it, but this whole soffit thing, for one reason or another, I'm just trying to throw something out there for you guys that have weird situations. There's going to be a million of them, so sometimes you just have to figure it out on your own using these principles that I'm showing you. But in this situation, I'm just going to show you at least one more thing of how I would handle this. What I would do, honestly, I mean, it's, it's just, I know this has got to be the wrong way to do it, honestly, but this is just how I personally find it easiest and quickest to get this done so it looks the way it's supposed to look. I would take this rectangle that I just made, and I would uh, edit the shape. I would bring it out, and I'd bring it out to whatever the depth is, right? And then again, I would just change that to, I don't know, let's just say it's, uh, 
fix it 10 feet, but it started at 10, let's say, let's make it 36 inches. That should be, I think that's right. Yeah. So there you go. Obviously, you know, you can apply, you know, to put lighting underneath here and all that. But again, the way that I like to do things is if I can use a 3D object, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing a, a 3D object uh, to make things easier because as soon as you start to plug in anything that's architectural, um, as soon as you start to plug in anything that will affect uh, the rest of your walls or your ceilings or anything like that, uh, it can it can get messy. It just depends on how uh, intricate or how uh, or how complex uh, your design is. It just really depends. So again, like I said, I, I like to personally use the the 3D objects. It just makes life a lot easier. So these are a few of the things um, that uh, your design is. You can. Um, really depends. So oh, wow. again, like I said, I, I like to personally. Uh, this is this is just how I like to do things. Everybody has their own way. And if you use these principles, if you use these principles, you can pretty much do just about anything when it comes to ceilings. And you shouldn't really have an issue. But anyway, um, this is just you know a few a few things that we're going over. I particularly made this video for somebody who was looking to do cathedral ceilings and had no idea how to do it. So hopefully I can see uh, your thumbs up, comment in there. I appreciate all the support, and I um, hope you guys are having a great day, great week, great year, and I uh, can't wait to see you in your next video. Thanks.